Okay, you're in Google Sheets and you want to create a stocks and shares tracker. You're gonna need two resources to follow this video tutorial. The first is the Google Finance function web page, which I'll leave a link to in the description of this video. And then the second thing you're gonna need is the Google Finance web page, which I'll also leave a link to in the description of this video. So I'm gonna show you how to do this for individual stocks, for ETFs, for mutual and index funds, and I'll also show you how to calculate the value of your portfolio. Now you can download this file, again, via a link in the description of this video, but if you're starting your own sheet, you're gonna need some column headings, as I've got them there. And the first thing you need to record or enter into your sheet is the ticker for the individual stock that you want to track. Now to get that ticker, you can use the Google Finance page. So for example, if I wanted to track my Google stock, I could type in Google at the top there, and there are the two Google stock. So I'll go for this one first, and that gives me the ticker in the search bar. So all I do is I copy that, and I paste it into this cell. So you'll need to do that for each of the stock that you want to track. So this is the complete list of stock that I want to track. So next we want to retrieve the name of the stock. And this is where we use the Google Finance function. So if I write equals Google Finance, the first thing it's asking for is the ticker. So that's why we've stored it here in this column. If I refer to that cell, comma, and then the second argument is attribute. So what do we want to return? Or what information do we want to return about that stock? We want to return its name. So what I do in speech marks is I type name. Then I close the bracket and I press enter. Now, if I autofill that, you can see that it's returned the name of each of those stock. So this attribute argument is the key to returning different information about your stock. And if you want to know what those attribute names are, that's where you need to visit this Google Finance page. So if I look down here, I've got a list of attributes that I can return, price, volume, market cap, etc. So all of these attributes are for real-time data. Then down here, we have attributes for historical data. We'll be looking at that later in the tutorial. And then lastly, there are attributes for mutual funds and index funds. So you can't use all of these attributes across all the different types of stocks and funds and ETFs that you're tracking. For example, Morningstar rating is only available for mutual and index funds. And price to earnings ratio is only available for individual stocks. Okay, so let's get back to our sheet and I'll give you another example. I want to return the one day change for this stock. So equals Google Finance. My ticker is over here, comma, and then the attribute is change. Close the bracket and press enter and I'll autofill that. Now, if I wanted to apply a bit of formatting to these values, I'd select them, I'd go to format, number. Now by default, because I'm based in the UK, it would apply sterling currency format to my results. I'm gonna go for US. So I need to go down to custom currency. And there I have the option for dollars. So I select that and I click on apply. If I wanted to show positive figures in green, negative in red, I could use some conditional formatting. So that's format, conditional formatting. Format sells if the value is greater than zero. And I want green text for that. And I don't want a background color. Done. Add another rule. Format sells if the value is less than zero. Don't want a background color but I want the text to be red, done. And then I'll close that down. Now I've actually put the names of the attributes across the top here, and you'll see why I've done that. What I'm gonna do is go back to this name formula, 
And instead of hard coding the attribute name in there, I'm going to refer to its name up in row one. So the idea is that I'm going to better copy this formula across and down this whole table. But to do that, I'm going to need to lock the A for A4 and the 1 for B1. Now, if I press Enter, I can then copy that down and then copy it across. And I get all the information that I want to display about each of these stock. Now, it's probably worth doing that before you apply any formatting because you can see that I've lost the formatting in this column. But nevertheless, you can use this formatting menu to either apply a specific format, percentage or currency. And you can also use conditional formatting as I showed you how to do before. Now, in my original individual stock sheet, you'll see I have a little graph here that shows the price fluctuation over a 52 week period. So I want to show you how to do that next. Now we're gonna start down here below our table and we're gonna use the Google Finance function again. So I'm gonna do this for my first stock in A4 and the attribute I want to return is price. So I'm gonna hard code that in. But with this, I'm gonna to have to use the start and end date arguments to specify that I want to return all the prices over the last 52 weeks. So my start date would have to be 52 weeks prior to today's date. Now to do that, I could return today's date using the today function and then subtract from that 52 times seven. So that would be my start date. And my end date would be today's date. So again, I'll use the today function. Now, if I press enter, what it does is actually return all of the prices at the end of each of these days. Now, for my little chart that I'm going to display in these cells, I only want these prices. Now, to do this, we have to put our Google Finance formula within the index function. Now, with the index function, you can specify that you want to return a value from a specific row and a specific column. Now, I'm not going to go in depth into how the index function works, but suffice it to say that we want to return the second column of data for our little chart. Now, to do that, our reference is going to be all the values that the Google Finance function returns. Then, after that Google Finance formula, we type a comma, and for the row argument, we're actually going to leave it blank. Now we're doing that because we want to return the whole of column two. So by leaving the row argument blank and then specifying two for our column number and closing the bracket, it will return just those closing prices for each of those days. So how do I create a chart out of these numbers? Well, what I can do is use the spark line function. So the whole of my formula now goes within the sparkline function. So the first argument is data. That is returned by my index and Google Finance formula. Now, if I just close the bracket at the end there and press enter, you can see I get a little line graph, which is quite good. But say I wanted a column graph instead. Well, I need to go into the formula. And between those two last brackets, I need to specify both the color and the type of chart that I want. Now I can do that by just expanding the details here. And it shows me the syntax I can use to specify a chart type. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put a comma between those two brackets and then paste in that syntax. So my chart type is going to be column. Then I'm going to change max to color. And then I'm going to specify the color. So I might say, for example, gray. And that needs to go in speech marks. So if I press enter, I then get a column chart within the cell. So all I need to do is drag that into position over here. And then copy that formula down and I'll get a chart for each of these individual stock. Okay, so that's how we create the tracker for individual stocks. Let's look 
at this ETFs page. Now you can't return a price to earnings ratio for ETFs, but the other information we can return, so it's pretty much the same as before, mutual funds. Now for mutual funds, there are some additional attributes such as Morningstar rating. So to return that, you just use that name, Morningstar rating. You can also return an expense ratio, again using that attribute name. Now if I go back to my Google Finance page, you can see that there are quite a few attributes that you can use for mutual funds and index funds. Now I have tried these, for example, 52 week annual return attributes, and I found them to be unreliable. Maybe I'm misunderstanding how they work, but they certainly don't tally with the information that you get on these mutual funds through something like Morningstar. So test them for yourselves, but I would use them with caution. Okay, so last of all, I just want to show you very simply how to calculate the value of each of your holdings. So here I've got a list of mutual funds, ETFs, and individual stock. Now here I've returned the unit price for each of these items. And then in this quantity column, I've specified the quantity of the stock that I actually hold. The one day change, that is just using the change attribute as we saw before. And percentage one day change, I'm using the change percent attribute. Now the value, very simply, is just the price times the quantity, and then you'll need to divide by 100. And that will give you the value of each of your holdings. Down here then, all I did was add up those individual values, and that gives me a total. So what you'll need to do as you buy more stock is just update the quantity field, and that will automatically update the total value of your portfolio. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.